Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. I apologize if the next few videos seem out of order, but I had 90% uh, of a video in the can. It was all good to go. It was how to hook up a DSPIC33 on a breadboard, and then I accidentally blew up the chip. Whoops. Uh, once the replacement parts come in and I build the circuit back up, which this was it right here, I'm going to finish up that video and post it. But in the meantime, I wanted to do a video on how to hook up a different microchip part on a breadboard. And this is the uh, PIC16 F1508. Uh, this is an 8-bit part compared to the DSPIC33 which is a 16-bit part, so this part is somewhat simpler, just overall, internally, and to hook up. So let's get started. So this is our micro, and the two main pins that we need to hook up is the uh, VDD, which is the power, and the VSS pin, which is the ground. So this pin is going to go to ground. This pin is going to go to 5 volts because this is a 5 volt micro. And something you always have to remember is whenever you have a pair of VDD and VSS pins that you want to hook up a decoupling capacitor across them. Usually 0.1 microfarads is what's recommended. As I, as I will mention in the next video, which is actually a previous video, which gets all confusing, but uh, VDD and VSS have historical meaning as to why they're called that, but just remember VDD is power and VSS is ground. So that actually is everything you need for the chip to run just by itself, but you still have to program the chip. So... Uh, Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot one more thing. There's a MCLR pin, or not MCLR, meaning that it's active low, and this is the master clear pin. So the master clear needs to be pulled up with a resistor to 5 volts, and usually uh, a 10K resistor is good for that. The LMCLR pin, the master clear pin, needs to be held high, so the processor is not held in recent. So once you get these basic components hooked up, you need to hook up your program. Uh, in my case, and in many other cases, just because it's cheap and readily available, I use the Picket 3. So the Picket 3 has six pins, but only five of them are used. And they are VPP, VDD, VSS, ICSP, DAT, in ICSP clock, CLK, like that. So there, we already have these three pins on our board, which uh, MCLR doubles as the VPP pin as well. In this case, what the programmer does is to program the device, it actually shoots a higher voltage into this pin I think it's like 12 to 14 volt to unlock the programming capabilities. And then it uses the ICSP DAT, ICSP clock pins to push the program into the memory of the processor. So then the processor, and I'll show you this on the data sheet here in a second, we'll have the ICSP DAT and ICSP clock. Well, I grossly misspelled that. But, uh, what the what this acronym stands for is in circuit serial programming data and in circuit serial programming clock. So now let's uh, jump over to the uh, breadboard and hook this up. Uh, also, what I'm going to do is uh, to finish off this video, I'm going to write a program, uh, download it into the processor, and make an LED book. And what I've decided is I'm going to do a separate video of just a video capture, kind of like I did with the Eagle ones, of me actually going through the data sheet and uh, picking out the registers and things that I need and just kind of narrate all of that. And finally uh, debugging it 
if it doesn't work the first time when I download the code. And all of that is going to be on a separate video. So we start with our empty uh, solderless breadboard and our microcontroller. So now let's take a look at the data sheet. Like that. So the uh, this right here is the microcontroller that we're going to be hooking up. Uh, this is the VDD and VSS pins I mentioned. This is MCLR VPP and ICSP DAT and ICSP clock pins like I was talking about before. Go ahead and focus on that like that. So you go ahead and punch the processor into the breadboard like that. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in the slide, but this processor has right there a mark, and that's pin number one. And from what we saw in the data sheet, pin number one is VDD. So when working on breadboards like this, whoops, uh, dropped it. I like to use these little jumpers. It's like, uh, there we go. That's nice and easy to see. It uh, lets you jumper two rows right next to each other. So what I can do is I can jumper VDD to the row right above it, like that. Sometimes you have to wiggle them a little bit to get them going. And then go ahead and put this other guy in. Uh, there we go. All right, so now we're going to grab our capacitor. This is a, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic, and go ahead and put that in right there. You always want to try and get these decoupling capacitors. There we go. It said it's now it's as close to the pins as you can get it. You always want to try to get these as close as possible. So now that we've got that installed, we need our 10K to VDD from the MCLR pin. And the MCLR pin is the uh, fourth one down. So the, the way this numbering works is you start at pin one and you work your way all the way down to pin 10. And then it works counterclockwise. So you go around and then pin 20 is the VSS pin right here. So we're going to go from VDD to, let's see here. One, two, three, four. So the, uh, these resistors with the kind of skinny leads require just a little bit of wiggling to get them in there. I feel like, oh man, I turns out I already had it in there. Uh. I'm sorry if this is kind of a boring part of me struggling with the breadboard. Oh my goodness. Let me straighten these out a little bit. Uh, needle nose pliers oftentimes really help with this part. One, two, three, four. There we go. That guy went in and oh, there we go. Perfect. I'm going to just kind of bend it off to the side to give us a little room. So now that we have that guy in, I'm going to install our LED, the one I was going to make blink. So on the LED, the pin that's longer is the positive pin, and we're going to ground it. So for this, oh. Let me double check this here. I'm going to use RA4, which is pin three. So one, two, three. It's going to be this pin right here. And now bring that over to a blank spot. Uh, with these LEDs, the, oh, there we go. That guy went in. The pins are so skinny. It makes them very difficult to work with. Oh, perfect, finally, there we go. And now the LED needs a dropping resistor. From uh, VDD to the 
LED. Oh, that went in nicely. Okay, so to hook up your programmer, there are two options. This guy right here is one option. It's a 0.1 uh, spacing, 0.1 inch spacing header. And this is a special one that the pins on both sides are extra long. That, that may be kind of hard to see. There we go. That looks better. Uh, this is compared to, let me move that out of the way, that's compared to this header right here. You can see that the, the pins on the left here are much longer than the pins on the right. So the other option, and I built this guy myself, is this cable where it, it has the 0.1 millimeter spacing header on this side, but on this side, the ribbon cable is soldered down to some solid core wires which makes it really nice for stabbing into a breadboard. So now let's go ahead and hook this guy up. Put the, bring the breadboard in here. So I like to use the blue wire here on the, on the ribbon cable as my pin one. So pin one on the picket is the VPP pin or MCLR. And that goes right there. Pin two is VDD. Uh, come on. Ah, there we go. Pin three is VSS. Like that. Pin four is ICSB DAT. Right there. And the final pin is ICSB clock. Just like that. Okay. Oh, let me kind of turn this around a little bit. Already, we'll in the in the next part, you know, in the magic of television, so to speak. I'm going to show you this LED blinking, but there will be another video of a screen capture of uh, writing, oops, uh, writing the code to make this LED flash. Just a very beginner uh, introduction to this, and. Uh, if it's necessary, any debugging steps necessary to get this light blinking. And there we have it. We have our LED blinking. As you might have noticed, the everything used to be set up over here. Now it's down here. And that's because I found that there was a bad spot in the breadboard, in the solderless breadboard that I'm using. And you can see all of that in the next video where I wrote up the software, and then went through some basic diagnostic steps of how I found that I had an open power pin to the processor. I was having all kinds of problems uh, programming this thing, and then I finally uh, checked the voltages, and there we have it. So I'm using my Picket 3 to power it right there, and I'm blinking the LED. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like my video, please give it a big old thumbs up. Uh, if you like the videos that I do, uh, please subscribe to my feed. Uh, I will uh, link my website, uh, eapbg.com, uh, down below. And uh, you will find the software that I wrote for this in my uh, next video. It will be uh, posted. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.